back into the studio with you this morning and sit down and talk with Mr. John Alley from Wondon Hospital. Good morning, sir. Good morning. Happy to be here. Glad to have you here. Yeah, it's a uh, hospital business right now. Anything I can do to get out is kind of a welcome <laughs> uh, uh, diversion. It's uh, just not been fun here the past 30 days. and I think we're going to have another couple months of just hectic hopefully see some uh, light at the end of the tunnel uh, with Pfizer now getting full approval for their vaccine. Uh, the excuse was, well, it's experimental. I don't want the vaccine. That hopefully is going to go away. We're going to see a, a massive increase in the number of vaccines because that's what it's going to take to stop this. Uh, yeah. You know, it, it's, we're actually seeing more new cases locally and statewide than we did last year. Uh, the Delta variant is far more contagious. You get sicker with it than what we had with the other variant. And so everybody we've had in-house has been admitted with COVID. Guess what? No vaccine. Mm. They're now saying, oh, maybe I should have got it. Uh, we've had you know staff members who's had the vaccine, caught it, sick one day. Now, we still quarantine for 10 days. Right. But your, your downtime of feeling rotten is one to two days. So... The vaccine does work. Is it going to 100% prevent you from getting it? No, but if you do get it, it is such a mild symptom that you know it's well worth it. So again, I'm so happy to see the, the feds finally say, Pfizer, you're approved. So maybe now we can start seeing some downturn on this. So Yeah, and it's a lot like the flu shot. I mean, it, the it flu is. shot's not going to 100% prevent you from getting it, but your symptoms are going to be less than if you don't have it. And it's actually, if you look at statistics, it's probably more effective than the flu shot because every year the flu shot is a best guess of what strain of flu is going to come. And so they make, you know, make their concoction, and they usually cover four to six strains of, of flu. And two years ago, they missed it terribly. It was, you know, the flu shot was virtually non-existent because it didn't do any good. So with this, they actually know what strains they need to make the vaccines for. So when you look at that, it's probably more effective than the flu shot. And the, the circumstances around it and the, the ramification of not getting is far more severe than getting the flu. So uh, again, Pfizer's been approved. Guys, get the flu shot. We really need you to do that. Yeah. On to the board meeting. Yes. Uh, one of the things that uh, we want to announce, the valet parking is back for now. Uh, you know, we had shut that down during the height of COVID. Finally got it going again, so we're monitoring that. We really want to keep it going, but again, if we keep seeing the dramatic increases in COVID, we might have to tweak that a little bit. But that's such a benefit to our elderly patients or those coming in for physical therapy. They don't have to park in the parking lot and, you know, walk all the way to the building. You can come up to the door, we'll park the car for you. When you're done, we'll go get the car for you. So. You know, it's back in service, so uh, please start using the valets. They love to help the folks. The other thing we talked about during a board meeting was Dr. Cly. I know he comes in here uh, and does yeah. doc talk. And we celebrated his 1,000th robotic surgery case last awesome. week. So he's done 1,000 cases on the robot. So that's, that's kind of a milestone when you really think about it. That's a lot yeah. of cases. Uh, you know, and to have him here and you know, help our residents stuff at Woodlawn is such a blessing to our patients in, the, in our service area. And, uh, you know, everybody has Dr. Clyde just love him. I, I've got not got a complaint yet, so it uh, kind of worries me. Is he paying these folks off not to complain? <laughs> but, uh, you know, good surgeon, him and Dr. Idebio are doing a wonderful job in our OB department. Now we've got Dr. Nile and Dr. Pullman doing robotic surgeries. Dr. Rombach is doing the, the knee robots, Dr. Sheedy. So, you know, we're kind of pushing that, uh, you know, that technology. It's a wave of the future. We know that's coming. So why not get in on it early enough and really let our patients benefit from that? COVID, I know that's something that's kind of, no peop, nobody's heard about lately. Yeah. Uh, it's kind of something hidden out there. Uh, just some clarification, you know, the remote COVID test site that was closed not too long ago, uh, that was state-run test site. That was not Woodlawn. We did not close the yeah. test site. The right. state did. Now, in today's newspaper, I saw that they're trying to reopen that site within the next week or two. Okay. Just because of the, the, again, we're seeing such a dramatic uptick in new positive cases. So my understanding is going to be at the same spot it was before. Again, next week or two, they should have that test site open. Uh, we've been doing the testing at the hospital, and to be honest, it was just out of control. Uh, it was a, it looked like the Afghan airport. Uh, you know, we had people blocking the driveways and stuff, so we had to really kind of, what can we do to make this efficient for our staff and for the patients? 
So I just want to kind of remind everybody, what is our process uh, for COVID testing at the hospital? First of all, you have to have symptoms. Okay. Have to have a physician order. Okay. We have a very limited supply of what's called the PCR test kit, which is kind of the gold standard. Uh, we get 130 of those per month. We're on an allocation. So we're using those uh, just for inpatients, surgery patients, and any patient that we need to transfer to another facility. Now the Binox test kit, we have plenty of those. And what we're finding is a, a lot of people are saying, well, that's not that accurate, so we won't accept those tests. So they're yelling at us because, well, I have to have the PCR test. Well, you're not sick, you have no symptoms. So we can't, we just can't do that. Right. Uh, all testing is now done by appointment only. Appointments are available every 15 minutes from 9 a.m. to 4.45. We do kind of take a break at the, uh, for an hour uh, so the staff can, one, get caught up and get lunch. So kind of gives them a 30, they get a 30 minute lunch. That other 30 minutes is to help them get caught up on all their paperwork. Now the most important things here is when you call in for an appointment, yelling, screaming, and cursing at the person on the phone does not change our process. Oh no. Also, yelling, screaming, and cursing at the person performing the test does not change our process. It has been horrendous, the attitude we've got from people on the phone screaming, cursing, and yelling at our staff. I've instructed them that if somebody calls in and they're very inappropriate, hang the phone up. Yeah. We don't want to do that. that that's not our mission. But at some point, i got to protect the staff. And it was absolutely out of control what those folks were going through. You know, and, and the final point is, please understand, all our healthcare workers are under a tr tremendous amount of stress right now. Would be greatly appreciated if you could just show them some compassion as they are taking care of your medical needs. Um, it, it's it's hard for me to watch staff cry from yeah. the treatment they're getting from patients. Yeah, uh, and it, it's just not not what they signed up for. They're trying to do their best to treat everybody as best they can, and you know we, we've got waiting. Lit, people now waiting to get into to the ER. So, you know, we're getting yelled at. Well, I've been here for 35 minutes because I've got a, a sprained toe. Well, we've got three heart attacks we're working, so we're probably right. going to get those people first. And, and what I'm getting, well, I was here before them. Why aren't you seeing me? So, you, you just understand what we're going through, what staff's going through. Um, you know, right now, we are very short staffed in all areas. Every hospital is. And it's just due to the fact that the COVID has taken its toll on the healthcare workers. We have a lot of our nurses who are, you know, not that old, retiring, saying, I'm done. Mm -hmm. I can't take this anymore. You know, we have the younger folks come in saying, this is not what I wanted when I went into nursing. So, you know, it's, we're having a real hard time now, nursing, uh, housekeeping positions, dietary position, maintenance positions, because we're all affected by it, even though we don't have direct patient care, maybe in you know the maintenance or right. folks like that. It does take a toll on them, and uh, you know some of the older workers are saying, "I'm, I'm just going to retire. I, I just don't want to do this anymore." And that's that's hard because they devoted their life to healthcare, and all of a sudden they're going out at this point where they're just feeling very unappreciated. They're feeling uh, you know a target basically on their back because they work in healthcare. So. Just ask folks, as you deal with us, please just understand what we're going through. Show a little compassion, a little patience. It's all, it's all we're asking for, for our staff. Yeah, and it's extremely easy just to, you know, after they get done uh, giving you the test or signing you into the ER or something, you know, thank you for what you're doing. Yeah. That's all they, they just want to hear a nice, simple thank you, not yeah. a... We haven't heard that for about, uh, about six weeks now. We haven't heard the words thank you. Now, you know, yeah, some folks do, but the majority are just, and I understand they're frustrated. Right. I, I would be too. You know, there's this unknown. I, you know, I don't want to catch the disease. And so I kind of go, well, at some point you made a conscious choice not to get the vaccine, which we have shown is effective. Mm -hmm. It does keep you from getting seriously ill, but they chose not to do that. So now they, they've got COVID and they're taking it out on us. And, uh, yeah. you know, the staff is just, I feel sorry for them because... I get the really bad complaints, but they get every day from everybody. So, you know, by the time it gets to me, the person is usually really mad. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, so I have to try to defuse that situation. But just, just asking, one, get your vaccine. They work. Two, dealing with the healthcare professionals, show them some compassion, show patience. Because, you know, we're doing the best we can as fast as we can, but this process in, in healthcare 
has processes. There are steps we have to go to go through, and we just can't, you know, circumvent our process because what we don't want to do is miss something right. as we're treating the patient. Right. So that's kind of the the takeaway today. You know, compassion and patience as you deal with your healthcare professionals, whether it's here at Woodlawn Hospital, our physicians' offices, or any other healthcare provider. We're all in this same boat, and. Uh, you know, when I start looking at other hospitals, we might even be better than some because, you know, they're having worse staff shortages than we are. And, uh, you know, some hospitals in southern Indiana, my daughter's a, a nurse manager at a hospital in the southern part of the state, because nobody else is taking patients. They're getting patients from five and 600 miles away coming into their facility. It's a large facility. So now I got a patient here who's no family member anywhere close. You know, so it's just rough on everybody. So yeah. compassion and patience, all I'm asking for right now. Uh, we did have Mary Kay from the Compassionate Health Center come in and did her annual report to the board. Each year she comes in and kind of gives an update of what they've done, how many patients they've seen. And, you know, one of the things that we look at is, you know, that does help the hospital because early on what we were seeing, we have a lot of folks who were coming into the hospital by ambulance before the clinic was here for, you know, diabetes and heart conditions. Now that we've got this clinic where these folks can go to, if they qualify, they're getting you know, pre-treatment for that. So now we're not getting them at the end of that disease. They're getting it ahead of time. Uh, so the board did approve to fund them for another year. Each year she comes in and uh, you know, basically says, here's what we've done and, and we want to, do you want to continue funding that? And it's unanimous with the board. I mean, they see the good job that's being done at that clinic. And uh, so that we want to support them and help them financially because when I look at it, you know, it keeps a lot of the folks out of the ER where it's uncompensated care. We, we're going to treat them, but we don't get paid for that. Right. So if we, and plus, if we can get their disease under control early on, they don't get really sick. And they don't need the hospitalization. So they're doing a fantastic job out there of, of getting those folks screened, getting them the treatment they need, whatever medications they need. If you qualify, you know, please check with the CHC. If you're in need of medical care and, and you, you don't have insurance and you're a resident, Check with Mary, give her a call and say, hey, here's my circumstances. Can I become a, a patient of the clinic? Because it's no cost. They worked absolutely off of donations only. Uh, hospital supports them. They get a few grants. But, you know, they, they're operating off of donations. And uh, that we saw that go down in 2020 and so far 2021. They're just not getting the folks donating to them that they've had in the past. Right. And, uh, you know, to keep those doors open, it does take funds. Uh, yeah. Most folks work there are volunteers. I think there's three paid individuals in that clinic. Everybody else volunteers. So, you know, it's not like they have a high overhead. So, uh, you know, strongly suggest if you like an organization you want to help, look at CHC and, and see if you could give them, you know, 20 bucks. Yeah. Just, you know, small amount. All that adds up to make a difference. Yeah, we've got that extra 20 bucks instead of going and buying a new T-shirt, donate it to CHC. Yeah, because it all adds up, and it goes back to the community. Like I say, three paid individuals is all they've got. Everybody else is volunteers, and they do an outstanding job of treating those folks that may not have had that opportunity for treatment elsewhere. They can go there if they qualify. There's a, a application you fill out. It doesn't take that long. Get the medical care that you need, and you know they have some dental that they can do now. So they've really expanded what they can serve. Yeah. And so it's really a, an asset to our community. We finally then got into the financial report. Um, so as we look at uh, the finances for the month of July, we had gross revenue of about 1.3 million. Our deductions, with the favorite number we always like, uh, we wrote off about 8.8 .8 million or 65%. Uh, we're one of the few businesses I think that can uh, continue to try stay open if, knowing you're going to go collect 35% of what you bill. Yeah. So we had net patient revenue after all that, about 4.7 million. Operating expenses of about 5.2. So we wound up some other things flowed through there. So we had an operating loss about 101,000. We had some non-operating income, which is things that we've identified that aren't directly patient related of about 91,000. So for the month in total, uh, all in, we had just a $10,000 loss. Not that bad. No. It would be much better if that was a $10,000 profit, but we're starting to see as we move further into the year, you know, our first few months, we always seem to lose money, and then at the end of the year, second half, start picking that back up again, and we're still seeing, you know, a, a downturn in surgeries right now, and what folks are saying, well, I'm waiting, I get my deductible all paid in, and <laughs> so what happens in uh, October, November, December, everybody's, you know, scrambling. I gotta get my surgery done because I want to get it done before my deductible goes back up. Yeah. So we're hoping to see 
as we move through the end of the year, of in, improvement in that financial position because, you know, we're like any other business, we do have to make a profit to be able to put back into the hospital for equipment uh, to be able to continue to serve the community. So uh, that was pretty well the board meeting. It, it was COVID related. Uh, again, we're seeing a tremendous spike in new cases locally and statewide. And if you look at the news, it's, it's just not us, it's across the whole country. Right. Uh, Delta variant is far more contagious than the other one, and we're finding that the folks are just a little sicker with it than what they had before. So again, get back up on the soapbox here. Please, please, please get your vaccine. It does help. Will it absolutely prevent you from catching it? No, but if you do catch it, you have one to two day illness at home, you're not in the hospital, and you know, you're back, do your 10 to 14 day quarantine, and you're back good. So uh, really can't stress it enough. The vaccine does work. Please get it. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, both of you and I have it, and I haven't grown any extra limbs. Uh, yeah. Things aren't sticking to my arms. Um, and I, when I go to the vet, that, that tracking for the, the chip yeah. is just not there. So yeah. uh, I, I just, it was so good to see the FDA approve the Pfizer. I think the Moderna and Johnson is going to be coming next. Yeah. Uh, that takes a lot of the wind out of the sales. Everybody say, well, it's still experimental. I don't want to get it. No, we're past that. Right. Uh, you know, one of the other things that we've been notified to come, uh, I think, mid-September or so, the booster shot is going to be available. Uh, the Pfizer has been approved for the booster shot. So again, it just gives you that immunity level, the antibodies in your blood to fight the disease is even going to be higher. So if you've had the, the Pfizer, your two, two shots, again, recommend get the booster. It, it just makes you that much more immune to the disease. I predict, you know, I'm, I'm not, uh, I look at my crystal ball I've got on my desk and I think it's going to be much like the flu. We're probably going to be looking at boosters for the COVID every year as we move forward because the disease is not going to go away. Right. You know, it, it's here to stay. No matter what we think, it's not going to go away. How to prevent it is the vaccines. And you know, when you do get sick, stay home, stay away from everybody. Try to, you know, quarantine yourself. And we'll still have a few folks get sick, but I don't think we'll have what we're seeing now with just thousands of new cases every day going into the hospital. Deaths are going up again from this. So, uh, you know, it, it's, it's uh, devastating to, the, to us right now. We've got to get a handle on it. Vaccine's the key thing for that. And I've got one question for you here, and then I'll let you get out of here, sir. Um, I don't know if you know, but maybe you can help me find out. If uh, you've got the Moderna, can you get the Pfizer booster, or do you need to wait? Don't for the know Moderna? yet. We're okay. still trying to get that information. That early on, the the the, I guess the scientist was thinking, well, if you do the Pfizer, maybe later on do get the Moderna because they are slightly different in what how they're manufactured. Does that make it a much more broad based immunity? Nobody has really come out yet and said yes. Here's what it is. Uh, you know, I know it's being tested. They're looking at can we if you have Pfizer. Can you get the Moderna? If you had the Moderna, can you get the Pfizer? Can't answer that yet. Uh, okay. I think that's still something that they're trying to get, you know, they want a comfort level. I'm sure somebody somewhere said, that's yeah, fine. But they I want to get that comfort level. So I think they're okay. testing that now to see, okay. you know, can we mix the two vaccines? So right now, you know, best I can say is check with your medical professional, with your, with your doctor. Uh, if you had the Pfizer, I'd probably go with the Pfizer. I'm sure Moderna's working on a booster. Uh, just like Johnson and Johnson, they all, they all three are probably working on it. Just Pfizer was the first one to come out with the vaccine, so they're the first one to come out with the booster. I'm guessing at some point they will have a booster, much like the Pfizer. But again, check with your medical professional; they can give you much better advice than I can. I, you know, Doctor Google only takes me so far, <laughs> and then I have to stop. So, uh, yes. but uh, again, please get your vaccines. Uh, that's best thing I can say right now. All righty, well. Mr. Alley, thank you very much for stopping by. Um, look forward to talking to you every month, and we'll talk to you again next month. My pleasure. Thank you. Thank you.